on the last day we have discussed about rutherford's atomic model although according to the new syllabus rutherford's atomic model is not supposed to be there but as you know we cannot propagate into the niels bohr's atomic model which is our topic today without knowing the rutherford's atomic model because where rutherford has failed from there only niels bohr have taken so we had discussed rutherford's atomic model and the certain failures also we have discussed today we are going to see first of all what is the planck's quantum theory because planck's quantum theory on 1901 that theory actually helped for this to uh, nuclear model or atomic model to be evolved number one number two is then we are going to go through the postulates of bohr's atomic model and from there only we will see what are the outcomes of bohr's atomic model and the drawbacks of rutherford's model whether niels bohr's atomic model could overcome that that is what we are going to see today so first of all let us see what is there in store for us we are going to discuss first planck's quantum theory then the rutherford's atomic model so as i have mentioned before moving into the bohr's atomic model we are going to go through the planck's quantum theory so let us discuss planck's quantum theory so we need to understand the time it is 1901 that means it came before the bohr's atomic model actually the reason for this planck's quantum theory was the failure of the classical electromagnetic theory of radiation because according to the according to the classical theory of electro magnetic radiation it suggests that radiated or energy radiated energy is continuous that means energy when it is radiated it must be happening in a continuous manner and that is you can say the maxwells theory so that is what the maxwell theory says but when this planck's quantum theory came in it absolutely hammered the total concept what he has suggested let us write down the the postulates first first is that radiant energy is emitted or absorbed not continuously but discontinuously so emitted energy or you can say absorbed energy it happens in discontinuous manner discontinuous manner that is the first thing and what kind of discontinuous manner in small packets in small packets of energy absolutely new concept small packets of energy we are going to discuss that so this is completely opposite concept as you can see here it is suggestive it is continuous manner and according to planck's quantum theory radiant energy whether it is absorbed or emitted it must be happening in a discontinuous manner that means suppose energy is coming in then stopped then again coming in like that second is the second point is the amount of energy associated with quantum of radiation is proportional to the frequency of radiation so we can simply write the amount of energy which is also called 
रेडिएटेड क्वांटम एनर्जी इज प्रोपोर्शनल इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू द frequency of radiation which means we should be writing e proportional to nu but this is the where we should we should say that nu is frequency so just to remove this term we used to write e is equal to h nu and this h is called planck's constant which is having a value 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule into second so let me write it down rather so h is having value 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second so what we have observed that the energy which is radiated or absorbed if it is associated with the radiated or absorbed energy that means it it is proportional to the frequency and just to remove this term we are introducing h and h is called the planck's constant now the third point is the total energy or the radiated energy from any body is only in terms of integral multi multiples of this quantum remember this is called quantum energy so here it is mentioned a body can emit or absorb or absorb only in terms of only in terms of the integral multiples of quantum terms of the integral multiples of quantum and here it is also mentioned that what how it should be explained it should be expressed as e is equal to n h nu remember this n the value of n can be 1 2 3 whole numbers only that means very easily we can understand that if an energy is emitted either it can be h nu 2 h nu 3 h nu etc that means integral multiple of this quantum which is h nu that means whenever energy is emitted or absorbed it cannot be any amount it has to be the integral multiple of this so this is absolutely new thing the planck's quantum theory and based on that only niels bohr's model has evolved so when we have understood the planck's quantum theory and when we have understood the difference with the previous theory which is maxwell's theory the time has come for us to move into the bohr's atomic model so the next topic will be bohr's atomic model let us see the next topic So now we are going to go through the Bohr's atomic model. It is having some postulates. So let me write down those postulates first. Postulates. You also write it down. Mainly three postulates. First one suggests that the electron revolves around the in electron in atom revolves around the nucleus. only in certain selected orbit with definite energy so in an atom electron revolves around only in certain selected circular 
orbit. Very, very important line. Now, this each and every orbit will be associated with a definite energy. We are going to prove that later on. And these are called Bohr's orbit. So, these orbits, these are called Bohr's orbit. So, this line, certain selected circular, very, very important. So, it is not just any orbit. It is having selected orbit, which is obviously circular in nature. Remember, these certain selected orbits will have definite energy, not just any energy. Now, let us see the second point. Second point suggests that only those orbits are permitted in which the angular momentum of the electron is a whole number multiple of h by 2 pi. Second point suggests only those orbits are permitted where m v r is equal to h by 2 pi here it is multiplied by this term n let me explain this carefully mvr this is called the value of angular momentum ok where obviously m, v and r as we know that m is the mass of electron V is the velocity of electron and R is radius. So it is mass, velocity and this is the radius. And this H is Planck's constant. So the H is Planck's constant. Now, what we have understood from here that only those orbits will be permitted which follows this mathematical criteria that means apart from this no other orbit is permitted it is not a single orbit see when we change the value of n we will be getting different values on the right hand side so those selected orbits are only permitted so if we roughly try to understand up to now it looks like that there is a nucleus and around which the electrons are circulating in circular orbit and only these particular orbits are allowed in between anything in between the anything suppose for this orbit mvr is not equal to nh by 2 pi then this dot dot this, this is not allowed ok then the third point that as long as the electrons remains in a particular orbit it neither loses energy nor gains energy the third point is the concept of stationary orbit it suggests as long as an electron stays in a particular orbit, it neither loses energy nor gains energy. Very, very interesting one. That means carefully see here. Suppose there is an electron here. If it is continuously circulating and if it is not going into the upper orbit or lower orbit, it will not lose electron. Sorry, it will not it will not lose any kind of energy. Third point we have understood. Now the fourth one. Fourth one suggests. Suppose 
an electron is present. Suppose an electron is present. If it goes to the higher energy orbit, in general, suppose you are giving energy from external sources, then the electron accepts that energy and goes to the higher energy orbit. And if for any reason from higher energy orbit the electron comes to the lower energy orbit, in that case it emits energy. So two things. The fourth point, electron goes to higher orbit when energy is provided. How much energy? Remember, all this energy is a certain amount of energy. And this, so this is the first part. And the second is when electrons goes to lower orbit, what it does? It radiates or you can say it emits certain amount of energy. So this is what the whole story is. This is all about Bohr's postulate. It suggests that the electrons are rotating around in a certain selected orbit, not just any orbit which has to follow this mathematical formula. Then if the electron is rotating in a particular orbit, it will neither lose energy nor it will gain energy. But if you are providing energy from external sources, the electron will accept that energy and will go to the higher energy orbital. And if, it, if the electron jumps from higher energy orbital to lower energy orbital, it will radiate the energy. So this is all about the postulate. Now let us see what are the outcomes of this postulate. The next thing that we would like to discuss is the concept of quantization. That means, suppose there is a nucleus and around it there are certain selected orbits. Okay. It means if an electron is present here, either it can go to the higher energy orbital or it can come to the lower energy orbital. But see carefully, this electron can either come to, suppose here, this is the first orbit as we mentioned, used to mention as K, L, M, N, etc. I think in junior classes you must have read. Here, suppose your N value is 1 n value is 2, n value is 3, n value is 4. So the electrons can jump from one orbit to another orbit. It cannot, this electron cannot come up to this much or up to this much. So this particular amount of energy either it absorbs or it radiates. This is the concept of quantization. And the quantized energy we write in the form of E is equal to H nu. That means, say for an example, these are the two cases. Suppose there is a continuous flow. You keep a ball here. What happens with time? That this ball can continuously go down, right? So from higher energy orbital, where it is having the higher energy, the potential energy will be higher at higher altitude, so it goes down slowly. So the amount of energy that it loses is in a continuous manner, continuous manner. But here what happens, if you keep a ball here, it can come over here, then again up to this place, then again up to this place. So it can obviously radiate energy, but the amount of radiated energy is a certain amount and it just cannot go anywhere. There are three places, one, two and three. Only. This is called the concept of quantization or you can say packet of energy.
that type of energy. That means electrons when goes goes up or it comes down, the amount of energy that it radiates is a certain amount. This comes in packet like h nu, 2h nu, 3h nu like that. It just cannot be any amount like 0.89 h nu. Energies can either be like h nu, 2h nu, 3h nu, 4h nu. These are allowed, but it cannot be like 0.83 h nu or 1.62 h nu. These are not enough. This is called the packet of energy or the quantization of energy.